So welcome back to episode two of Mike's personal training. <laughs> I'm here with Mike. So um, last time we ended with getting through all the lights um, in the example scene I had. And today I actually want to talk about what else and uh, other features you can have with uh, your lights. So let's just uh, dive into it with this scene here in Unreal Engine from yesterday. And we've got some lights in here. And so let's create another light. Let's maybe a point light. So we create a point light in here. And today I want to talk about the light functions, which I think will be super useful for you as well, Mike. Because, let's say, look at this light in here. Under the, so every light you have, probably use on movable again. So you see this one, lighting needs rebuild, right? It always happens when you have it on static or stationary. So we have it on. Exactly, so let's have it in here. A nice light, let's put the FOV a bit further out, 35. So under the details tab, and then you scroll down, um, there's a tab which says light function, right? And let's say you wanna have a neon light, or maybe, um, maybe something like, uh, this and it's like a tube. Oh, I'm sorry, this one. So it's something like that, right? Like uh, this shape, maybe a bit smaller, like that, ten or five. So let's say something like that, and we want to simulate like a neon light, which is actually pretty tough. Like, let's put it here in the background. Um, I'm going to talk about if you have a static mesh later on and to light the environment for that as well. But like, let's move on with this one. And let's say you want to have it flicker, right? And instead of turning them on, off, on, off, on, off, you can actually do that with the light function. And that's pretty useful because if you just open the content browser, which is so let me just do this in here and I made one already from the previous material but let's say we make a new one right same deal we make a material this time and we call it light function 2 for now and we open this up and then you got this window where you can actually create your shader <coughs> and under the material domain you, you, you got to have to click take light function, right? And it just and disables everything else except for the emissive color. So you could just make, I don't know, maybe um, the light function on its own. It's like what we want to do is we can want to tell the light function that we it needs to go on and off, right? If you want to have a flicker. So basically, to have a one on and off, what you need to do is like you need to make a parameter for the material instance later on that you want to control how fast you can make the flicker, right? So what we got to do is like let's say we got a um, we're gonna use a time node in here, right and. All it does, let's say it's on periodic, put that on one, and we're gonna put that in here. You actually see what's going on, right? So it already starts to flicker, but we cannot like, um, this is a really basic um, example, but it doesn't, sh it, it doesn't give us any control on how um, we're gonna input the time or like, in, like we gonna 
control the the speed. So let's say we're going to apply that one, right? Just just for the sake of that light function in here. We we select this one and under the light we still got this selected under light function which is going to drag and drop it in here and you see that's all we got, right? But let's say we want to further enhance that and I we need to multiply that one. So just hold M and then left click or just look for multiply. Gonna multiply that with a scalar value. So hold S and then left click and that's a scalar parameter. And we call it let's say speed. And all it does it it, it multiplies this value with zero. Right? Or with with Right now it's at zero, so let's see what it does. Right now it does nothing because it's on zero. Let's say we got it at two, and then you can see at five, at one. One is the default one, so let's hit apply. And what we're gonna do right now, because we made a um, scalar parameter, we can right click this one and create a material instance. So, an instance basically inherits all the parameters in here, what we made, but only in the instance of a material we can actually adjust it in real time. So we open that one up and that's our um, instance. So let's say we're going to change that one up to 10, for instance, right? 10. And then you can see if we put it up higher and maybe even higher it doesn't hmm. oh wait wait a minute <laughs> that's because yeah I was like hmm it doesn't work so we gotta put that in so five ten so basically what this is, is basically um, the, the light strength because you multiply of one value, which is the time, with this value, right? So if this is 1 or 0.5, let's say 0.1, it's basically just the strength. So what we got to do, open this one up and create another one. Just put a sign in it and a sign what a sign is it's just going oh wait uh, stop here uh, uh, we don't have a texture so how do we do this just give me a minute mm. Oh no! Wait a minute. Just forget, forget what I'm saying. <laughs> so this is basically the strength and not the speed. Just rename that one. Strength of the light. Okay. So here, in here, you can also ignore the pause. So let's say. Oh, so okay. What if I do this? Here I go. So in here you actually can have the period. The lower it gets, the faster it's gonna be. <laughs> so um, there you go. But because you multiply that with the strength of this value with that one. So this is a quick example on how you're going to make a flicker and you can also have a pause in it, not necessarily no pause, so it just constantly goes. Um, what you can also do is like what I actually have in the other example, let's not save this one. This one is um, have a texture, like a black and white texture going across the whole uh, this is pretty simple. So let's say I got a caustics texture, which is this one, right? 
it's a fairly large one actually it's 2k and to have this effect going on all I'm doing so here you can see again same thing like at the end result I just multiply that with a scalar value to adjust the strength but it couldn't been also be this right so this part is only the tiling right you have to have so if you let's say have forget this one so if this is your texture and you just want to tile it across your material you actually have to make a texture coordinate node just type of coordinate and then take that one right and here you can see that's the u tiling and that's the v tiling one on one in here if you select this one and if you multiply that with the overall tiling right and here the default value is one and you multiply into uh, together and you plug that into the UVs you're gonna adjust the whole tiling of of each of these two values right so let's say I'm gonna make that two gonna look at it in here oh, five it's pretty self-explanatory but you could also just do it for each individual part let's say you want to uh, you want to separate word that you want to just you um, tile it in the um, in the u the u tiling so you put that on one and that's on the zero because one times zero is zero so you can also do that like duplicate that one exactly so you can also do this and then put that one on zero and one and then you multiply them back in Right, and you call this one uh, tiling for V and this one tiling for U and just chuck them back in here. But we don't necessarily need that, so we just want these ones both on one and then we tile the whole texture. Exactly. So that's only tiling. The panel node on this one, the, what the panel does is actually it just, we're going to have a look on here and put the speed so you need the panner on its own it doesn't do anything but the panner is just it pans the whole texture to from your uv space in either one of one of the direction x or uh, y and if you put the speed on here you see how it actually moves like this is my texture right you see that it just moves up in this direction so what we can do yeah it does have to be tiling so right now it's not but because I am I need to multiply those two into here in the coordinate put the tiling that's what I did put the tiling into the coordinate put the speed into the UVs and that is the whole thing if you can see it's not a perfect tiling, if you can see, but for my case, I don't actually necessarily need it. And here, at the end result, I just multiply them back with a strength, and so I can adjust the strength. And you see, underneath, they got like the parameter uh, name on it, and this means we can adjust those in the material. Yeah. Yeah, you like. Let's say you want to do. Oh no, so the light function on its own is just saying like where it has to be lit and where not, right? Like mask, yeah. Exactly. So because you got all the, let's put the light caustics instance for, oh, yeah. this is the instance from that material, right? And here are the parameters we enable it to have adjustable. So let's put that on real time. So yeah, sometimes you have to click real time in here so you actually see what's going on. So in here, uh, there you go. See, it's currently just panning across. And this is the strength, as you can see. And this is the tiling. And then here's the speed. <laughs> 
So let's put put that instance into in here, and you see what's going on. <laughs> Looks super weird, but because it's a light, we still let's see if we can adjust this a bit. So it's length, so strength. Oops, because it's a light. Oh, sorry. Because it's a light, you still have all the functions in here, all the things, right? Like so. Let's make it this way. Oops. So you see, because it's so big, uh, attenuation rate. Right. Maybe not necessarily in here, but let's say in here, on the ground. You actually see if I got a tiling texture, <laughs> it wouldn't wouldn't be break like it wouldn't break in here, as you can see. But I think it does give you a nice idea of what I mean with using light functions. It, basic light functions you don't need necessarily need to have colors in it, but just like saying where what it's gonna do with the light, right? Everything that's black, it's just multiplies it with zero. And everything that's white, that's gonna be where the light is. That's why you can have many textures, you can have any textures you want and try with different ones. Um so oops. And you can adjust the scale in here for you instead of doing the attenuation rate. So that's one thing to do. Um yeah, so let's move on to another one and which is really cool. And that is let's put a uh let's put a cylinder in here. And in some cases you make a mesh maybe in the inside and you want it to glow. So let's put it in here. And you gotta make a new material. Whoops, where's my oh, let's call it intensive. Double click that one. And then um I'm not sure. Maybe we can use an unlit material shading model because you don't just need the immersive color. And if you scroll down, if you click on here in the viewport and you scroll down, there's emissive dynamic light. If enabled, the material's emissive color is injected into the light propagation volume. Um, so if you put that on, and then I think there was another one. Fully blur, block global illumination. So let's put that on, and then we make hold V, left click, and that's a constant three vector, which means we can change the RGB on this one as a parameter. Let's call this color. And what we can also do change the, take this one and cha change the strength. So in here we can change the colors, right? By red, green, and blue. And the value is just how, oh, what the hell? Oh, for some reason just like, Okay. <laughs> Alright, just have this one. Just hit apply for now. And let's say we make a material instance from this one. We apply that to this. And open that material instance. Change the colors. And have the value, like if you're gonna slide it, it's from the one. And uh, zero and one, but you can just type in like any value you you want, and then it starts to glow. Like you see here, let's say fifty, right? And then change colors, and you start to see. You can also use that as a light source, but let me double check something because I think. Post process. Let me just turn off the lens flares because it's a bit distracting. Zero. Yeah. So I think right now it doesn't affect 
the environment, as you can see, right? And let's say there are some cases you want to do that. Um, here, use emissive for static lighting. And that is for static lighting, which means you have to bake it. So this is the mesh I selected. And under lighting, it says use emissive for static light mass is Unreal Engine's light builder, basically, like under what settings you can see. So if I just gonna, if this mesh has a second UV channel for the light maps, let's double check. Channel one, yeah, should be good, and then it should build uh, lighting only. It should build the blue emissive into that wall, hopefully. <laughs> so let's have it baked, and as you can see, yes, it did. Whoops. So that's something for the background you might want to have as well. Um, it's not the cleanest bake, but you got to experiment like with what values you want to have. Maybe the 50, uh, the emissive value is just too strong, and then you got to rebake it again. Um, but that, what? But going with a baked lighting, um, static lighting, you're gonna have a baked GI, so you don't necessarily have to. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put a lot of lights to fake a bounce light, right? So let me just really quickly make a new level and talk about that really quick. So I'm going to dismiss this. So let's say you got a room. Let's make it really quick in here. Do this. This is some awesome modeling in Unreal Engine. So I gotta do this. Right, and then, or maybe. Doing something like this. And right now, our sunlight, um, let me just put in, uh, Post process volume really quick to neutralize, like what I mentioned yesterday, neutralize the scene, extend that. Um, where is it? Exposure, set it one and one. And our sunlight, a directional light, which is in here. only affecting this one. So right now um, we are in a closed room and that's going to make it full. Oh wait, it's actually floating a bit. So let's say this, speed it up a bit down here. Right. So let's say this is your room and you, you for architectural visualization they use it a lot. Let's put that to 50 to actually see what's going on, or 75, see what's going on. So if I hit bake right now, lighting only, it should bounce, the light here and here should bounce around, ideally. But if you do it like this, everything's kind of black, but that is because in the world settings, Close that one. So in the world settings, under light mass, like I mentioned, this is Unreal Engine's like static light calculator, so to speak. Um, there are a bunch of options. So you can t actually say how many bounces the light's going to have. And let's say use the ambient occlusion as well. Like That's really useful. So the static lighting scale, lighting level scale, so the higher you go, like you can actually see in here, um, it's going to increase your build time the lower you go. So um, that's going to pick up how detailed it's going to calculate. Because we got a small area like here, 
like a small room we can i i tend to go like 2.3 or a l lower than one definitely and then you can increase the number of indirect light bounces so the bounces it's going to have when it hits this room you can have it on 10 or whatever just see see what it does just have those free values and then you can also use yeah let's let's just go with these two values and let's hit the lighting again see what it does give us so it's building the light and it doesn't do a lot but that's all right because you can go onto the post process and now that you've built the light right the indirect lighting in here right now it's just black that's also because of the material let's say um, let's put the basic uh, let's have it on lit mode for now so I can actually see let's put this white in here and there this that this do we did we cover a lot because um, if you have a material which is basically there's no material on it and you hit the light again obviously the color of the materials plays a, a big role into the bake lighting because it's going to bounce from that right so we build that one and you actually start to see that uh, that bounce already it's really subtle but what you can also do, you go into your post-process volume, go on the details, and now that we got a baked GI global illumination, you can go on a here, global illumination, and you can set the indirect lighting intensity. You can bump that up, and you see what we actually got here. Do you know what I mean? So right now, because I build it with like a preview quality, it's not a sign. We can go up to high and see what it does give us now. And it's a fairly small scene as well. And I think for a character environment, if that's what you're going for, let's say a character in a room, you can definitely use this, right? It, and you don't necessarily have to take one or the other. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> also the light map. Oh, there you go. Yep. So <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say is like, you, sh you could take your environments and... Um, make a spake lighting in here, right? Make everything beautiful for the environment first. A simple environment is enough. And then um, you can also combine it with a dynamic lighting for your character. So your character could also stand in here and you can also, like I showed you yesterday, put those lights for that character, put them in the light channel, right? And then um, you have the best of both worlds to be, um, to be frank. So you can increase that. And in the world settings, there's a lot of settings you can actually play with. You can, like, the number of sky light bounces, you can also increase up whatever you want. Let's put it for five, and then the indirect lighting quality. And you see this AO, like, it's fairly strong. Um, you can also have the environment intensity, like, boost it up as well. But I wouldn't necessarily touch that, But because the more you touch those values, like, those settings, um, the more of a risk there is that you mess something up and you don't know what you actually did so I would try to not mess too much with that um, and the light maps you can also see if you hold alt and click through the numbers right so 2 is wireframe 3 is unlit and this um, 4 is lit mode and then detail lighting I mean you probably know this and in here there should be um, alt and z which what is it alt and zero is the light map intensity mm -hmm. and ideally what you want for that is that to be green so if you click on that and scroll down until lighting and over and you check that one on overwritten light map resolution and you could just go up until it's green so maybe go with the power of two especially so 512 maybe and then here as well, 512. Let's quickly do this. Whoops. Oh my god. <laughs> 512, that one. 
five, twelve. So the higher the, your light map resolution, the better the shadow is going to be. So if I hit build again, just give it a second. It's going to be a bit better, I hope. So you could have that like a, a, a room, windows, and like your directional light coming in. And you can still, um, because it's a light, where, where is it? Light source, on our details. You can still adjust your intensity, right? Your light colors, um, source angle. Whoa, looks a bit weird. Oh, there you go. So you see that looks a bit smoother now, and you we got that nice bounce, right? Like that's pretty cool. I didn't do the resolution in here, but you can actually do this, um, and you can also under we got the light selected right now, which is where is it here? Um, there's also like different settings which you can use indirect lighting uh, intensity. We can bump that up. If you want, let's put it for five. If this one is too dark for you, you know, and then same with the other one. You can shadow sh uh, filter sharpen, so you have a sharp um, shadow, and the shadow bias. You can also bump that up to lower value, point one as well. Like the same deal what I showed you yesterday, right? And if you really want to go crazy, <laughs> you can also go exponential height fog again, right? And then ch um, check that volumetric fog on. Take that light source and volumetric scattering. Let's put it on 25. And let's see what it does now. Just really quick. <clears throat> so yeah, um, I think um, having uh, having the options to go f uh, stat uh, static lighting and dynamic lighting i should i think you should definitely should make use of that because it just gives you a, a lot of options right you don't necessarily have to light everything in the environment but that also depends on what you're going for um yeah but that's basically the main quick ba basis of uh, how i um treat my light oh holy shit so let's give it a minute there you go so you see now we got this room and it does give you a lot of these bounces and you can definitely play around with that yes yeah yeah it's a low res shadows because the AO is not baked in it, you know. But yeah, um, this is the like you can definitely tune that down as well. Um, just need to see. I mean, this is already on high, and the world settings you can definitely use the ambient occlusion. And then there's the max occlusion distance. You can actually play around with that. That's in Unreal Units, 200. And the exponents, you can actually turn that off for now. But I think, yeah, the dark shadows, you can definitely play around with the lights, uh, light settings in here. And what you can also do, because you baked it already, you can also use um, temperature so let's say put this one. So this simulates the sunlight kind of thing. Oops, or like a sunset. Maybe not that high, but you know what? You know, you know the idea, right? Like you get the idea. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So um, that is that for the baked lighting. Definitely, you can go super crazy, like you see with the architectural vis visualization. It's pretty dope. But um, I think that covers this one. So um, I'm not sure what kind of idea you have with your character. 
at the end or I don't know like what do you actually have in mind for your character do you oh really oh okay okay that could be fun as well um. oh yeah sure just let's let me have a look in the meantime play around with this a thousand Oh yeah, cool. So let me just pick the lighting. Oh wow, that's that's super cool. That's like super colored as well. That's awesome. I'm just gonna. Yeah, that's super dope, actually. So. Dude. So you see as well, like, um, if you look at these tubes or, yeah, these tubes, these glowy tubes, this is actually what I mentioned. If you make them emissive, right, and you can actually make that emissive super glowy and then put the lights, like what I did is put a green light in here just to fake it because we, I, I didn't bake it as I did with this one. So I actually had to make this emissive and then put another light to have these, to have this effect, right? But the super interesting thing about that is like you see that strong, uh, strong rim light, right? That's super cool. And from below you got these cool, like it's it's like a bounce like from, from below, which is really nice. So that's definitely gonna get a cool vibe so awesome so yeah got this going on um yeah you could also do the elevator really quick like in here and then have the top light from top down and bake it right and then put your character in and have the dynamic light which is really cool as well um yeah so do you have specific questions as well for any other types or should we talk about um, mm -hmm. is there like materials you want to look at as well oh yeah like um maybe just open that level open this one for now and talk about what we actually did today and just show you what I did on this scene so here you can see let's turn white outliner let's turn any other lights off for now key light so right this is actually like the the lights I used for the effects um, same deal as, as the other one as you can see it's a colored light and then the light function should be which one this one here and then this one in here right so one actually has a light function right um, let's do Boom. Right, so, so yeah, exactly. So one light, which is this one, oops, is in the potion. It's actually inside, right? And that only gives me the caustics. So you can see, it only gets the caustics. But because um, it's only giving me the caustics, I actually put another in light next to it is this one and just glows for that as you can see and same deal with this one because we don't have um, a dynamic GI in this scene 
put two extra just for the cheeks you know so it gets affected so as you can see it's a lot of fake stuff as well but like why not you can paint with your lights right same with the necklace to get that sparkle uh, oops, in here I got another light in here right so that effect is done by a friend of mine he actually works with me as well and he made those effects for me and on its own it's just this effect um, this sparkles effect and it's a particle all right and then i put another light in here so it does look like it's actually glowing <laughs> so there's a lot of fake stuff as well and same with the liquid in here which is really dope effect because it's a liquid no matter how you turn it it's still gonna you know it's still gonna be uh like gravity based you know what i'm saying so you can do that so let's put the lights back on um what else no that, that those were done by a friend of mine yeah yeah these dust thingies right uh so these dust particles and i just got them and then oh, i'll go in there and like are not the best <laughs> one to show you that to you like but i can like, expand the lifetime or like the initial color and these are all the values you can like change but yeah so it does give you like a, a good presentation to have these little extras right maybe it's a bit too much but um yeah so that is covering the light so as i can yeah i don't think there's something else you need to actually know but um we can definitely talk we need i, I think we need to talk about the post process as well because it's as equally as important as doing lights so we quickly covered that yesterday with just um the exposure just to neutralize your scene right so you can go up but i would suggest to have it in the same value it's just easier for you to work with so um make it unbound as well you don't necessarily have to but it's just a preference right so let's see let's go through that so the post process let's put that, 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 that. fill so the first things first you should not touch any of this these film the film tab you should not i mean you can if you if that's what you look like if that's a look you want to go for because that's this stuff is actually calibrated specifically and it's done by let me double check that i don't want to tell you lies so I pause yes. um, da, da, da. using camera no oh, that's weird it's definitely done but like by like some official film guys what they actually use for cinemas and stuff so i wouldn't actually touch that because it's calibrated for that i mean unless you really want to but what you could do is uh, under color grading because uh, um, under color grading that's sometimes where i actually p give it a bit of punch where you can have the, the temperature changing for your whole scene so that is affecting your whole scene because it's unbound and the saturation globally or contrast you can definitely play with that like if you just click the arrow and then one is like 100 percent and then make it 0.5 is 25 percent more saturated right so you can do that and it does give you like a super cartoony look <laughs> maybe not as strong as this one you know and then the contrast and saturation in the shadows as well like you can actually just um do that for the shadows 
which is really cool if you want to have an effect like that and i think it's it, you can get some really graphical effects with that as well and i think for your concept you can also definitely play with that um there's a lot of things so this on the color grading there's a lot of things you can do um have you ever heard of LUTs? grading lot so you can definitely have lots in here as well but i didn't ex import them but all they, they do is just basically save a specific like color grading right into one texture exactly so right now it's nothing um as i said film you shouldn't touch that mobile tone ever is not interesting for you i guess um lens the chromatic aberration <laughs> That's that's what we're talking about. Um, usually it's on point, it's on zero, but like, I mean, do whatever you like. Um, the bloom, there's two methods to that. It's convulsion and the other one is standard. I do like to work with a standard one, but like, I mean, if you hover about it, it's fast Fourier transform image based convulsion. So intended for cinematics, too expensive for games. <laughs> so I th I'm not sure if I should use that. And I, it does make it bit everything a bit blurry for some reason. And I, I don't actually like that look. Yeah, so definitely go with that. You can also have a dirt mask for your whole screen, right? So I'm not sure if there's a dirt mask. Let's say we use this one. Do you see my caustic texture? Uh -huh. Yeah, so basically you can have like a dust thingy. I don't know if I got anything in here. Yeah, exactly. So you can actually do that as well. And it's always staying there. Um, the camera on its own. Um, it's not interesting as well. Oh, yeah, we can also talk about depth, depth of field. Oh, no. Give me a sec. So exposure, lens flares. Usually I have it on zero because it's really distracting. Um the image effects, your vignette effect, the grain, jitter, and intensity. So depth of field. Um, depth of field is when I used it for the trailer thingy, which I made. Exactly. So let's say you're super close in here. And right now, um, the standard, like the default one is um, depth of field is turned on bokeh effect but usually it doesn't do anything because um, the scale you have to turn it up a bit if you're on bokeh so as you can see if i'm super close in here and then what you have to do is your focal distance i think yeah let's put it down that's an unreal unit i think should be I don't know, like you have to see uh, what values you want to have out of that, but I don't usually like the bulky. Uh, what I like is the uh, circle depth of field, but I think at some point they're going to replace that as well. So I'm not too sure. So let's say mm -hmm. I need to cover more. I'll say something like this, and then 15, 25, 20. Yeah, I have to see. <laughs> oh, that's too low. I think 50 was not so bad. Yeah, exactly. So turn that on. And then under camera, you go back the A picture. So the lower this one is, the A picture, the blurrier it gets what is not in your focal distance. If you can see, look at this one, right? So you can definitely have that in focus. And that is a depth of field. You can change cautions, depth of field bokeh or circle. But I do like the circle, so it does have the best look in my opinion. Um, post process volume settings in here the ambient uh, cube map I wouldn't use that to be honest um, the ambient occlusion is really really useful as well so let's turn the depth of field off for now uh, 
useful. And what's super useful to calibrate your images as well is um, if you go under lit, yeah, you click this one, and you go down to buffer visualization, there's actually like different stuff like overview. If you click, it does show you your specular, your subsurface color, all that, the metal, what everything that's metallic and your roughness, right? So that's useful. But also, I think there's uh, ambient occlusion, which is broken. So <laughs> that's weird. Um, or was it? No. So this seems doesn't work for some reason. Okay, that's weird. But going back to the ambient occlusion one. Um, it does give you like a lot of control as you can see and if you go onto advanced there are more options so the ambient occlusion what I think um, maybe it's on the other s sorry it's on the other scene I think which actually shows it better don't save this one yeah there you go so we click that one that's our post and then ambient occlusion the bias actually tells you how detailed your ambient occlusion is going to be right so that's a screen space effect and the power as well and definitely well if you want it in world space or not but the radius is um, by default is at 200 I think which is a bit too far and then you get that dark aura look some games have if you know what I mean so definitely play with that play with the radius like how and I, I especially for characters I think the lower you are the better it is because it just gets that crisp um, detailed look you know without actually having it weird looking so you know what I mean you see that she does get a dark aura for some reason if you do super bright um, yeah so ambient occlusion definitely in the post process volume play with that um, and then the global illumination we talked about that for static lighting can bump that up if you want and um, screen space reflections definitely for sc screenshots make the intensity at 100 quality as well and yeah I just have that all on and the screen space percentage you shouldn't worry about that but if you want to have super crisp details right so the screen sp percentage that's to render with a high or low resolution so let's have it like let's say 25 uh, maybe 100 or 200 you don't okay you don't see that to be honest you can do is you see that so if I go 50 you see it just gets down rest right and if you can also go 200 so it's super crisp if you look at this one so compared from 50 to 200 so before you do screenshots you could actually bump that up to 200 have it super crisp and because sometimes the engine does look a bit um, blurry the your your models so definitely do that and then if you want to have screenshots um, definitely click this high resolution screenshot and that is by default um, HD so that is like 10 1080 and if you put that on 2 that's like um, 4k already I think yeah should be 4k already and you just take the screenshots that's super useful so I wouldn't do um, F, press F9 or something for doing screenshots, but rather use this one, high resolution screenshots. So yeah, um, I think that covers the lighting and what I use in tips. And if you got any questions right now, let me know. Um, otherwise, um, is there anything you want me to cover as well for the next days before we jump into making something? Like, or something which is it really seems interesting to you? Clothing? Uh, we can definitely talk about that if you want.
and uh, like I sh can show you the, my basic setup for the cloth if you want and then um, just like tips and tricks and also probably maybe tomorrow if we do it tomorrow clothing let's have the um, best way to or my way at least um, on how I pack my textures so you can actually make use of the shaders and all that stuff all right, so let's do that tomorrow then. But uh, we are actually really good with the time. So I think that is it for this second day of talking about the lighting and the light setups. And then we see uh, what we can do tomorrow. So let's talk tomorrow about that. All right, thanks.